This is the second in the Masterclass series by Robert Clark. The following techniques will be of particular interest to advanced jiu-jitsu students who are studying combination locking and restraint. The individual style of these moves are special to Bob Clark and are taught in this modular system to enable the student to build up his repertoire of advanced techniques. As this is an instructional tape, all the moves will be shown at variable speed and from different angles. Close attention should be paid to the following points. Stance, posture, footwork, flexibility, and style. In medieval Japan, there were various arts and exercises in which the samurai were trained. Amongst these was the art of jujitsu. The word jujitsu translated means the art of gaining victory by yielding or pliancy. Its main principle being not to match strength with strength, but to gain victory by yielding to strength. It is almost certain that all major schools of jiu-jitsu are based on this principle of strategic flexibility. And in turn, these are influenced to a certain degree by the doctrine of harugai. The practice in theory of harugai, hara meaning centralization and integration, and ki, centralized extended energy, were applied to overcome the many complex problems of existence. This concept of centralized energy emanating from the Hara has become a cornerstone of Jiu-Jitsu and many schools still include this discipline in their teachings today. Technique number one is the first in a series of escapes from being held by both wrists from behind. This second demonstration is from a different angle, enabling you to see the correct position of the footwork. Once again, the same technique is applied at a much slower speed to enable the viewer to concentrate on the complex locks. Step forward on your right leg, encouraging your opponent to pull backwards. As your opponent pulls backwards, step backwards into a gunfighting position. Bring your hands forward, smack the back of the wrist together. Then turn under your opponent's arm. 
Be ready for your opponent's attack. Step across into a body drop position, hand round the body and throw. Beware at this point of any further attack from the opponent. Strike to the opponent's mastoid. Left leg across your opponent's head and down into a straight step over arm lock position. Change hands and pivot your body, taking your left leg from your opponent's head and replace it with your right. Hold your opponent in a Nelson position and turn by applying a wrist lock and a neck and shoulder lock. Place your left leg round and in front of your opponent's throat. Rise from the ground into a shoulder lock, elbow lock, and to, into a reverse back hammer lock. Slip your leg away from your opponent and sit down. Lean forward and with a scooping motion bring your opponent's left arm into a back hammer lock. Locks can be affected by slightly leaning forward. This is the second variation of an escape when held by both wrists from behind. From this angle, you can see the many arm locks that are applied continuously throughout this technique. When demonstrated at this speed, please pay attention to the exact positioning of the hands when applying these locks. An important point to note is that the knee traps the hand and then follows through level or past the opponent's head to cause an effective lock. Step forward on your right leg, encouraging your opponent to come forward. Stepping backwards, striking with your buttocks into your opponent's groin, move into this gunfighting position. Pull your hands forward, striking your opponent's hands together. Come out to your opponent's right side, into shoulder and wrist lock. Step forward, bearing down your opponent's shoulder. At this stage, step out and away from your opponent and apply an elbow and wrist lock, forcing your opponent down to the ground. Move next into a back hammer lock and hold your opponent. Lean across your opponent with all your body weight and place your elbow under your opponent's shoulder and turn into a half Nelson locking position. Release the hand that's been held in the back hammer lock. Kneel on that hand. Move into a sitting position, taking your hand round your opponent's neck and move into a hold down with a single arm lock. Once again, leaning forward to gain the maximum leverage.
This is the third variation of an escape when held by both wrists from behind. We advise you to take great caution when applying this particular leg lock. The beginning of this technique is exactly the same as the previous two. Stepping forward, stepping backward, striking with our buttocks to our opponent's groin and moving back to a gunfighting position, slapping the fingers together. Moving under our opponent's arm into a shoulder and a wrist lock, stepping forward and applying our lock. At this stage we change tactics. Right hand on the floor, right leg behind our opponent's left leg on the inside of our opponent's knee striking immediately with a back fist to our opponent's groin we pull our opponent's left leg as tight as possible against our own leg put his right leg tight against the ankle move our left leg into an Indian deathlock position then striking with a roundhouse kick to our opponent's face at this stage lean on our opponent Step across our opponent, stepping backwards to effect a lock and kneeling down. We can also turn our opponent into a reverse Indian death lock position and apply the lock. Technique number four demonstrates the defense against a right punch swiftly followed by a left. The circular blocking movement employed in the defense is intrinsic to this particular technique. This is a defense against two punches using a circular blocking technique. As we block with our circular block, we step to the side and strike to our opponent's solar plexus, turning our opponent's hand. At this stage, beware of a further attack from our opponent's left hand. Release the right hand and come into a straight arm locking position against our opponent's elbow. Underneath our opponent's arm into reverse body drop position, throwing our opponent to the floor. Turn the opponent's wrist down to the floor and apply pressure on the elbow. Hold our opponent's remaining hand 
and jump over into the groundwork position. Kneeling into an intended scarf hold and moving into a back hammer lock whilst on the ground. Notice how we turn our opponent, trapping his left hand under his body. Step across the opponent in two stages. Release your arms and gently lean forward. Second defense against two punches employs both locking and strangulation techniques. Extreme care is required when applying this particular choke. Please apply only the minimum amount of force when using this technique in the dojo. Once again, this is a defense against two punches using a circular blocking technique. The blocking strike to the opponent's solar plexus. Turn the opponent's arm and be aware of the opponent's further attack. Turn the opponent. Release his right hand and apply pressure under the opponent's elbow. Hand round head, kneel, locking pressure against the elbow. Throw the opponent to the floor. Push the opponent to a sitting position. Trap his arm and apply a bar collar choke. Right hand underneath the opponent's right arm, applying your next choke. Lean backwards, still trapping the opponent's arm, and bringing your right leg across and behind the opponent's head, strengthening your choke hold. Pull down the opponent's wrist, therefore locking the elbow while applying the position. You can move into a further wrist lock demonstrated. Take care with the lock, it's a very severe choke. Further defense against two punches. Shown here from a different angle, which enables you to observe the correct application of angle and choke. This close-up enables you to see the correct positioning of the arms and hands during the stranglers and hooks. And this position will both neutralize and stabilize your opponent's resistance.
The same procedure as before, stepping to the side, circular blocking and striking to the opponent's solar plexus whilst turning the opponent's right arm. Beware once again of the Turn under the opponent and apply pressure against the elbow. Take it round the head into the kneeling position and take it to the floor. Push the opponent forward into a choking position whilst trapping the opponent's arm. Stick our right hand under and round the opponent's head and push forward. At this stage, change hands and come into a collar choke. Taking the opponent's belt, fall backwards. Bring your right leg across. This is to prevent the opponent's legs from leaving the ground. A push followed by a punch is countered by various methods. Choking, shoulder locks, and hold down. Please note the fluidity of movement employed when moving from one strangulation or choking technique to the next. This is a close-up of the following technique. Push the opponent's head, come into a naked choke lock, right hand under and over opponent's head, change arms into a collar hold down, pull downwards choking the opponent, hand round opponent's head and into a locking position, press down on the nose. An attempted punch and elbow strike are blocked and the opponent taken to the ground. A combination of locks are now employed, including shoulder dislocations, arm locks, a neck lock, and wrist lock. From this angle, you will be able to see the exact striking position. Positions of the feet yeah. for the head and neck lock and also the correct positioning yeah. on the wrist lock. Yeah. In this technique, we use an outside blocking technique while stepping to the side of the opponent. Watch out for further elbow or back fist strike. Strike to opponent's kidneys, reach down, take opponent's ankles. Push with shoulder against opponent's buttocks, step forward, raise leg and strike with your heel to the vertebrae. Bend down, take opponent's wrists, step forward and lean forward, applying pressure against opponent's shoulders. Kneel down on right knee, 
Bring left leg round opponent's head whilst applying pressure against opponent's elbow. Push opponent's arm down. Reverse rolling position. Making sure your foot is trapped behind opponent's neck. Completely turning. Stepping forward. And applying pressure on opponent's shoulder, elbow, wrist and the back of opponent's head. At this stage, pivot. Lock opponent's arm tight between legs. Apply wrist lock position. Lock opponent's strike into straight arm lock. And apply a double lock. Counter measures against ground strangles by incorporating locks and hold downs. The palm heel to the chin will temporarily stun your opponent enabling you to go straight into your series of locks and hold down. The foot against the throat causes an effective choke when turning into your next position. Kneel down, Strike to the groin, then roll round into a hold down with double arm lock, leaning forward for maximum leverage. Defense against a ground strangle. Strike your opponent with the palm heel to his chin, making a bit of space for yourself. Put your right leg on your opponent's left hip. Left leg round and in front of the throat. Left hand in front of opponent's wrist. Turning your opponent to the side. Pivot, affecting a neck lock and a wrist lock. With your leg on the floor and your foot off the throat, turn against your opponent's elbow. At this stage, beware of a further attack. Push his arm to the floor into a figure four, hold down, release the opposite arm and move into a hold down with a double arm lock. Lean forward again to gain maximum pressure. and escape from a half Nelson using a rolling ankle, strike, arm, shoulder and elbow lock. The success of this countermeasure depends on the correct application of the back hammer lock during the throw. Viewing the move from this angle enables you to see the correct positioning for hands and feet. Defense against half Nelson. Step forward, raise right hand up into the air, pivot underneath your opponent, taking his wrist and locking his elbow. Right leg in front of opponent's right leg. Sit down into rolling ankle position and throw your opponent to the ground. Follow up with kick to opponent's groin. 
Turn opponent into a back hammer lock. Bring your left leg over opponent's body in two stages. Finally, finish with leg behind and underneath opponent's chin and lean forward against your opponent's elbow. A downward block and cross block deflect the two blows employed in this attack. The deflection is followed by a double straight arm lock, shoulder lock, elbow lock and ultimately a dislocation. When demonstrated at this speed, you are able to witness the precise positioning of hands, feet and body. Defense against two punches using combination locks. Downward block, take your opponent's arm, block his left punch, pivot into a straight arm position, step away from your opponent in reverse shoulder and wrist lock. Step across your opponent and effect your lock. Step away from your opponent into elbow and wrist lock, push down against the elbow, take your left leg round the head Lean against the elbow and wrist with your upper body and once again lean forward to effect your lock. A circular block parries a right punch to the face. Your opponent is then taken to the floor by various locks, hold downs, and double shoulder dislocation. Please note the weakening kick to the solar plexus the back fist to the jaw and the straight arm lock applied when being taken to the ground. Once again, defense against a punch. Step to the side using a circular blocking technique. Strike to the opponent's solar plexus. Turn opponent's wrist away from you. Watch for any further attack and block accordingly. Left hand inside the elbow and pull backwards. Take your right hand away and apply pressure against opponent's elbow, forcing your opponent to the ground. Back fist to the back of the head. Turn. Bring your leg over and under opponent's chin, locking your opponent's shoulder, elbow and wrist. By leaning forward, pull your leg out to the sitting position. Lean across opponent with all your body weight. Put your elbow under opponent's arm behind his head to a double locking position on the ground. Once again, leaning forward. <laughs> 